beyond the ordinary, then the nature of the parent is to repress that, cut that ability away, so that the child becomes average. Hmm. And sure. and so we, when a, when a child expresses uh, powers, uh, the tendency of the community is to actually make them average by denying their powers or making them ashamed of their powers or afraid of their powers, so they 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 don't exercise them. Hmm. You know, and, uh, and mm-hmm. we lose these powers because of that. Exactly, and and uh, and in your book you have a have a chapter called uh, "Parental Life Experiences Shape Their Children's G- Genetic Character," and this is fascinating. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? But yeah, you know, this this is this is the fun stuff. This uh, part of the book was based on my research from 40 years ago. I was working on stem cells, and it's interesting because today people think stem cells are something brand new that just came about recently. Mm-hmm. And the fact was that my experiments, I, I was fortunate enough to work with the primary scientist who, who actually cultured and cloned uh, stem cells. So I got, I got my training from this, this brilliant scientist about stem cells. But what was interesting about it is that I would isolate a single stem cell and put it in a Petri dish all by itself. Mm-hmm. And by doing that, when the cell would divide, then it would make two stem cells, and then they would divide, and there'd be four and eight and 16, and pretty soon there were thousands of cells in the culture dish. Mm-hmm. But, but the important part is every cell was genetically identical to all the other cells because they came from the same parent. Mm-hmm. So they were like all identical twins. And, and my first experiments that... that sort of blew my mind, was I I took a a culture of identical cells and split it up into three Petri dishes. And in each Petri dish, I put a different growth medium, slightly different uh, constituents or stuff in the growth medium. Mm -hmm. So I had three different culture media. And I I put uh, the cells into three dishes, each one with a different media. And what happened was, in one dish, the cells form muscle. The other dish, the cells form bone. And the third dish, the cells form fat cells. Well, the, the interesting fact is, but all the cells were genetically identical when they were put in the dishes. Mm-hmm. So I say, well, why did one become muscle and one become bone or one become fat? And the answer was, not because of the genetics, because they were all genetically the same. Hmm. The reason why the cells became different is because they were put into different environments. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, I said, well, wait, uh, because at that time, we were very much in science talking about genes control life, and my experiments said, wait, the control is not by the genes, the control is by the environment, mm-hmm. because that was the only thing that was different. Hmm. So I started to trace this and came across the mechanisms by which the environment information actually changes the genetic readout. Hmm. So... Uh, this was uh, this was pioneering studies. I was only one of many, but I happen, you know, I'm very happy to have been there early in the game to see this. Mm. But it has led to a whole new field of science. The new field of science is called epigenetic mm. control. Yeah. Now, now, what's different? About, there was an old field of science that most everybody in the audience has been trained with. That old field was called genetic control. Mm. Well, genetic control in English, when you put it, it means control by genes. And I say, yeah, but what's epigenetic control? Well, the prefix epi, epi is a Greek uh, prefix for above. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if I say epigenetic control, literally that says control above the genes. Mm. Well, this is the new science, and why is it important? It says... Genes are blueprints like potentials. Genes are potentials. But the new mechanism, epigenetic control, is what selects the genes and selects the potential. Mm -hmm. And and so the control was not in the genes. The control is above the genes. And what's above the genes? Above the genes is the mind. Hmm. The mind of the cell or the mind of the human is what selects our genes and can change the the gene, the readout of the gene, the gene activity. Here's what's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Old science. A gene is a blueprint. That's what the old science is. It's a blueprint to make a protein. 
a protein, the, the body, the building blocks that make our bodies, the, the building blocks that give us our shape and our behavior, those are called proteins. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so to make these very complex molecules, the DNA is a blueprint to make these molecules. Well, now with the new science, it says this, is that with epigenetic control, you can take a, one of those genes, one blueprint, and you can make over, listen to this number, 30,000 different variations from the same blueprint. Mm -hmm. hmm. What that means is, we used to think genes are defining who we are, but the new science says that our mind can lead to 30,000 variations of every gene, hmm. which means all of a sudden we're not limited by the genes, we're only limited by the mind. Hmm. That's fascinating. So, so the, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was actually go wanted to ask you, just uh, sneak in here, uh, because you mentioned stem cell research, and there was this uh, recent thing uh, where someone from the, let's see here, what does it say, University of Wisconsin used actually a, mm -hmm. a virus, uh, uh, added a virus to four uh, different skin cells and actually turned skin cells into stem cells. Did you hear yeah. about this? Yeah, of course, it's very important, because let's explain something about a stem cell, because I think people hear the word, but they don't really know basically what they represent, mm -hmm. okay? In every one of us right now, you, me, every listener on this, uh, on this show right now, our bodies have stem cells all over the place, and stem cells are like embryonic cells. They're potential, they're reserve cells, they wait until we need them, and then they divide, and they create whatever it is we need. If you need to repair muscle, then the cells will become muscle. If you mm -hmm. need to repair the bone, the stem cells become bone. You, you want to repair a uh, brain, you got stem cells that will make new nerve cells. Yeah. So basically, throughout all of our bodies are stem cells, and they are embryonic-like cells. Now, when cells mature, see, so when you have an embryo cell, which has all the potential to become anything in a body, but when a cell decides to become a muscle cell or a bone cell or a fat cell, it, it, all the cells have the same genes. What you do, it's like a computer program, and you go in and you select some of the genes that you want to make muscle, which is a different set of genes that I would select if I wanted to make bone. Mm -hmm. So when the cells become mature, they only use a certain selection of genes out of the, the whole uh, collection of genes called the genome. Mm -hmm. So every, every mature cell is only using a certain number of genes, but an, a stem cell has all the genes available to be used. So mm -hmm. it hasn't picked them yet. Mm -hmm. And so when we were, research was looking for stem cells, they were looking for the original cells in the body, that they're scattered all over the place, that actually are these embryonic-like cells. But what they found is you can, like, reverse engineer or, un, or unprogram a mature cell, like the skin cell. Mm -hmm. And by unprogramming it, meaning open up all the options of the genes, not just the ones that made it a skin cell. Mm -hmm. So the, by reverting, the, gene, uh, reverting the, the, the genome into the earlier version, you can take a skin cell, which is a mature cell, but then open up the genes so that you can reselect a whole different bunch of genes and make something different with it, mm, yeah. then you can take a mature cell and turn it back into a stem cell. Hmm. And that's what the new research is showing. Now, the question, which is like a joke to me, because it says, well, wait, we all have stem cells. Then why should we have to wait for the drug companies to figure out how to make them work. Mm -hmm. Why are we giving our stem cells to research scientists to make them work? And you would have to say, well, well, they, obviously they're, they're not working in us, so if we would figure out how to make them work, then we could control them. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, but the question is, wait, if we all have stem cells, we have to ask them why don't they work for us. <laughs> <laughs> I like this joke. It's sort of like, I ask people in my lectures, I say, do you think God gave us stem cells and no way to use them, that we have to wait for the drug companies to figure out how to use them? Mm. It's a joke. Of mm. course we, we must know how to use them. That's why we got them. Sure, sure. The question is, why don't they work for most of us? Well, they work, and but only when we're... Well, they do work, but only when we're young, right? 
No, no, they work every day of your life. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, here's, here, I'll give you a fact that, yeah. that you can see why you need them. The, the, the lining of the...